Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. Today we have another episode with the never-ending stream of Princeton disk squeal and tri-spoke problems. And this is the latest suspect. Now, in the previous 12 months I think I have made already uh, quite a few videos on the issues that are plagued uh, or that these wheels are plagued by and the solutions we have implemented to fix them mainly the tri-spoke front axle uh, and uh, the tactic rear axle which is suitable for all wheels with tactic hubs uh, so this is one of those axles and uh, this has been the test wheel provided by our customer to try all these in practice to see if it works long term and very early on there has been another problem outside of the bearing preload problem that uh, popped up with this very wheel and lots of others as I gathered from interactions I've had with other Princeton wheel users and that problem or the source of it is the super light tactic uh, ratchet mechanism which consists of these parts so you have a, a spring that pushes this gear onto the free hub itself and you've got a conical spline interface on both ends that engages or more accurately it disengages under even very slight loads which is a big problem because then you have no drive force coming to your wheel we have brought this issue up with Princeton and their first solution was to send um, another free hub which then worked for a good few months until it started slipping again and at that point they were no longer reacting to our requests and um, regardless of what we have done with the free hub or, and, the, and the preload I meant to say because well the, my first assumption was that because of the insufficient free hub um, and bearing preload with the standard axle it allowed the two rings to actually disengage from each other because there was play but when we then implemented our own axle in the meantime where it, the distance is completely fixed so this literally has no way to go but the problem persisted and I think to, that's mostly down to the fact that this drive ring is made out of aluminum and it just can flex out of the way and be pushed down by the other part and that's a big problem uh, because well I rolled this wheel myself and um, the skipping just got worse and worse as, as the ride went over so I imagined that the teeth would be completely broken off or worn off but they didn't actually this is the faulty set itself and um, there's not much you can tell visually so I have to assume that it's due to the teeth flexing out of the way and thus not propelling um, you forward quite a few people have addressed this issue to me or forwarded this issue to me so then I know at that point that it's no longer a unique thing that we have with this wheel so we decided to work uh, again on a more permanent solution so after all this I started to think a bit more deeply about the problem and then well I came to the conclusion that since they're not providing an answer uh, for this and um, it's quite hard to actually precisely determine what the issue is here because it's quite complex maybe it's in the geometry maybe it's in lack of stiffness maybe it's in the material just too difficult to see the original files so we can make simulations so then I started thinking about it in another way which uh, could be potentially very complicated but in the end we have solved it so the first uh, presumption that I had was that luckily the diameter of this dry ring in the hub shell is rather large so I thought there must be a suitable solution or a suitable free hub mechanism 
different from this one that fits inside the diameter. Uh, first I was thinking DT Swiss, but that's uh, not really a good solution because we have already developed the axle to be 17 mm diameter and DT uses 15 mm. So that would add an extra layer of complication with a brand new axle, completely new design. So then I looked a bit further and as uh, this year we have started working with scope wheels and their Artec series predominantly, I realized that this mechanism, as said, the scope Artec one, fits inside there because the diameter is really rather small. Plus, it uses a different tooth profile and steel components, so both the drive, dri drive ring and the receiving ring are hardened steel. And yeah, it just works. I can't see how this wouldn't work or would disengage. Also, the teeth are much deeper. So yeah, I just thought that this would probably be the perfect solution. And as a bonus, it also uses the same 17 mm diameter axle. So win-win. Now the only thing we needed to achieve was to create a transition between the parts of the scope free up mechanism and the Princeton wheel. We did that by 3D scanning the existing components and uh, printing, or 3D printing should I say, uh, prototype designs. So this is what, not me actually, I can't take the credit for that, but the company we work with has came up with. So this is the driving adapter that uses the outer tooth profile of the Princeton free hub and the inner tooth profile is that of the scope free hub like so maybe it's yeah it's plastic so it's not the perfect fit also the scope free hub is operated by a flat spring instead of this more standard coil spring so we need an uh, adapter for that to house it all together and also want to take up the extra space and as a bonus this change also throws off our wheel dish so we have to make another little small spacer to the drive side to bring it back in line by two millimeters although we also know now that Tactic Heavy is two uh, different versions of their free hub without mentioning anything ever uh, so as you can see the depth to the or from from the face to the inner edge of the bearing is very very different in fact it's three millimeters different so to accommodate the older deeper one with less spacing you have to use even more spacers but that's the least of the issues here so that's how it works when this was done and the design was done I went ahead and forwarded the final designs to our manufacturer who then created this. This is basically the first steel prototype that fits into the wheel and yeah, does all the things we have just discussed. So that's how it goes. It's been through a few hundred kilometers of testing and it works perfectly fine. So now it will go into production. So the way that you fit this is, well, you basically follow the method that we use for our own hub axle. So here it goes. Then the innermost part is the steel drive ring adapter should I say so we have that right inside then we have the plastic spacer on top of it we have the spring seat slides on there we have the spring itself now the scope drive ring fits in there very nicely and then the scope free hub 
topped off by the spacer and the end cap, we could potentially develop another end cap which takes this into consideration. But maybe that's for a further refinement. We'll see how much demand will there be for a product like this. But at least we don't have to throw this wheel away. Then what you do is to tighten the two ends using 18 millimeter spanner wrenches. And as the final step, you can adjust or should adjust the preload of the bearings via our threaded ring here and a TX9 torque wrench. So that's the assembly. Works beautifully with very low friction, engages nicely, disengages nicely. There's no amount of power that you can put through it to make the steel components slip. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now there will be some more testing and we'll put this into production for a small batch initially. So if your wheel does suffer from any of these issues, then you will be able to find these products uh, on our website very soon. Or if you need it even sooner than that, then reach out to me via the links below, via the best is email obviously. And we'll help you uh, sort this out. So yeah, that's hopefully the final nail in the coffin for Princeton disc wheel or wheel in general uh, issues. So. I hope you have found this uh, useful in case your wheel does suffer from these problems. If anything else comes up, we'll probably be here to solve those again. Thanks for watching and see you next time.